Hello everyone to yet another video about Tomb Raider on the Socket 3 platform. Today I want to add a few more CPUs to the results we have collected in the previous video. The two main CPUs I want to focus on are an Intel 486DX4100 which comes with 16KB of level 1 cache. Unfortunately, my Intel DX4 is the write through model identifiable by the engraved ampersand %E. The write back model would have an additional letter W at the end. Most likely a write back model would be slightly faster than the write through model I will be testing today. We have seen that the write back cache is superior when we compare two Intel DX266, where the faster cache improves the performance in Tomb Raider by 0.5 frames per second. The other CPU I want to focus on is a CPU I found in one of the 486 motherboards I recently pulled from a pile of discarded electronic boards. This AMD SX66 is clocked at the same frequency as the Intel DX266s, but it does not have an FPU or floating point unit. In the last video I suspected that Tomb Raider makes excessive use of the FPU. That could be the reason why the Cyrix 5x86 may have done so exceptionally well in this test. For reference, the Intel DX2 CPUs got over 15 frames per second in combination with a Diamond Monster 3D. What frame rate do you think the SX2 from AMD can achieve? Of course the Voodoo card will be there to assist the CPU, but the FPU will be absent. I will also test a few other CPUs for good measure. There will be a Cyrix as well as an AMD DX280. Both run at a bus frequency of 40 MHz and a multiplier of 2. Then there will be two AMD DX4 CPUs clocked at 100 MHz, one with 8 KB and the other one with 16 KB of level 1 cache to have a comparable competitor to the Intel DX4100. And finally, some of you requested to clock the Cyrix 5x86 at 100 MHz, but this time with a bus frequency of 50 MHz and a multiplier of 2. So, let's start with the first star of today's show, the AMD SX266. This is a 5V CPU and comes with 8KB of level 1 cache and write through mode. As far as I am aware, this is the fastest SX version available for the Socket 3 platform. But before I start Tomb Raider, let's have a look at some other tools that give a bit more info about this CPU. As mentioned before, the level 1 cache operates in write through mode and system information reports a score of 143.4 points, which is identical to what we got with both Intel CPUs. But enough of this, now it's time to start Tomb Raider and see what fine frame rate this CPU can deliver. What the... Is this the power of SX CPUs? Do you want to see this again? Okay, okay, although I think that it would have been cool if 3DFX would have spiced up their 3DFX splash animation, you probably already figured out that I am taking you for a ride. This sequence is a bit… modified. How much? Well, I wish I could tell you that it is just the sound effects. What? what the screen is still black. Well, this is how the 3DFX animation is rendered in real time. Seriously, you have to wait for a few seconds for the next frame to arrive. I sat through the entire painful experience to have this animation render and then I had to speed it up by 30 times of its original speed to get this smooth animation. And then I added the sound effects. Anyway, so yeah, this CPU despite its 66 MHz clock speed is unusable. And it doesn't get better in the menu when we get about 4 frames per second when it just has to rotate Lara's notebook. So I think there is proof that Tomb Raider depends on a good FPU. And this should give you a new understanding of why the invention of the FPU is a way bigger deal than it gets credit for. Even with a voodoo card in the system, you get a real slideshow. This is definitely less than 1 frame per second. What's funny is that the game doesn't even bother to show a frame counter. I didn't switch this off. It just isn't there. Of course, I won't make you go through the entire benchmark. You get the picture. What an unsuitable CPU for this game. And just for completeness, no, it does not get better if the game is rendered in software mode. Let's move on to the DX2 CPUs now. The two models I have for today are a Cyrix and an AMD chip, clocked at 80 MHz. And although I did all the work and recorded the benchmark, the cave with the wolves and the T-Rex, we won't see all the benchmarks in full length. But what I can tell you is that the AMD and the Cyrix CPU are so similar that it will be hard to tell the difference from looking at the footage anyway. 
we need to have a look at the benchmark results at the end of this video. However, I do want to spend a bit more time looking at the Intel DX4100, the other star of today's show. In the demo benchmark, we briefly touch 15 frames per second. Not particularly good, but also not bad. The only other CPU clocked at 100MHz we have tested so far was a Cyrex DX4100, which dropped to 12 frames per second at the same location. So the Intel CPU seems to be doing quite well. Could it be the larger level 1 cache? In the caves, we start strong and stay above 13 frames per second while fighting the wolves. This is once again a better result compared to the Cyrex CPU. Lara walks across the bridge at 20 frames per second and looks over the map at 16 frames per second. The T-Rex battle is also quite good. We did drop to 12 frames once, but only for a very short moment. During the majority of the fight, the game renders at around 15 frames per second. The Cyrex 486DX4100 did drop to single digits during the T-Rex fight. I would not be surprised to see the Intel CPU leading the pack of most pure 486 CPUs. But let's move on and see how the direct competitor, an AMD 486DX4100, will do in the benchmarks. We start looking at benchmarks taken with the 8KB level 1 cache version. In the chart at the end of this video, you will see results from the 16KB version as well. I think I did see 11 frames per second at the location that seems to be the most difficult to render which is a bit slower than the Intel CPU. When fighting the wolves, the frame rate drops to single digits, which is a significant decrease in performance compared to what we have seen from the Intel CPU. This performance deficit continues when Lara walks over the bridge at only 18 frames per second, that is 2 frames slower compared to the Intel CPU. And finally, the look over the map is rendered at 17 frames per second, which surprisingly is a bit faster. The fight against the T-Rex however shows again the difference between both CPUs. We constantly dip to single digits on this CPU during the T-Rex fight. It would be interesting to see if an AMD CPU that also has access to 16KB of level 1 cache will do better in this case. And this is exactly what we are going to do. This is the last benchmark footage for today. The fight against the T-Rex with an AMD 486DX4133 downclocked to 100MHz and 16KB of level 1 cache in write-back mode. Unfortunately, the Intel CPU has access to write-through level 1 cache only. And what we can observe here are very similar frame rates. Both CPUs with 16KB level 1 cache seem to perform very similarly. But let's have a look at the results of the demo benchmark of Tomb Raider. The 10 CPUs at the bottom are from the previous video. The first new CPU in the list starts from the SX266, for which I didn't bother to give any score because it is for sure less than 1 frame per second. Then we see the two DX280 CPUs. The AMD is slightly faster compared to the Cyrex CPU. This is a bit surprising because based on speedsers, the Cyrex CPU seems to be superior. Could it be that the AMD CPU has a slightly better FPU performance? Let's move on to both AMD CPUs clocked at 100MHz. With 8KB level 1 cache, the AMD CPU managed to score 20.7 frames per second. Doubling the cache results in a boost of over 2 frames to almost 23 frames per second. However, this is still slower compared to the Intel DX4100, which seems to have the best FPU among all 486 CPUs. At 23.7 frames per second, it even rivals the Cyrex 5x86 clocked at 100MHz with its enhancements disabled. And finally, the Cyrex 5x86 running at 50MHz bus speed does not increase its performance significantly over the Cyrex running at the stock bus speed of 33MHz and a multiplier of 3. To make this CPU work with a multiplier of 2, I had to experiment with the jumpers on my Soyo 4SAW2 motherboard. This is how I configured the jumpers on the board. Unfortunately, I also had to adjust the timings of the cache and memory to be able to run this CPU stable in this configuration. I think it would be better to run this CPU at its stock frequencies. It will also not stress all the other components in the system beyond their specification. So, what did we learn from the additional tests today?
First, the FPU is tremendously important to 3D games like Tomb Raider, even if you have a 3DFX Voodoo add-on card. The Cyrex 486 FPU seems to be the weakest among the three brands, outperformed by AMD and Intel FPUs. However, Intel is the king, almost reaching the Cyrex 5x86 with its altered M1 core design. Also, the game doesn't seem to benefit much from the extra memory bandwidth we get by overclocking the system bus to 50 MHz. It looks like the FPU performance is the limiting factor. Therefore, it is better to run the CPU and therefore the FPU at higher frequencies. And finally, 16 KB of level 1 cache are superior to 8 KB. So, let me know in the comments what you think about the terrible performance of the SX CPU. Would you have expected the game to run this badly? And wouldn't it have been a bit nicer if 3DFX had given their splash animation some sound effects? Well, let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.